Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk all about Fortnite's new controller sensitivity and aim assist settings that they added with the most recent update. These settings are really in depth and pretty complicated for some, so I wanted to make this video explaining it to the best of my knowledge. I tested out a lot of these things and tried to figure out what each of them do. So I wanted to make this video explain to you guys and hopefully help you pick a new sensitivity or go back to your old one if that's what you want to do. If you do enjoy this video, please do remember to give it a like rating and subscribe if you would like to see more. Also share this with any of your friends who are having these problems. So you have two options with the sensitivity changes that they made with this most recent update. You can either go legacy, which is your old settings, completely as they were. There's even L2 spam on the legacy settings, which I will show in a moment. Or you can go with the new settings. And the new settings give you a lot of customization options. It's a lot more in-depth. There's a lot of different things you can change. And lots of players are confused as to what these things do. So I'm going to go through and quickly explain how I would go about setting up the new profile. So for starters, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you have the option to use legacy look controls. If you put this on, it will put you on your old settings. And the old settings do have ADS spam. Like I said, I will get to that in a bit. But starting out, if you wanted to use the new settings, I would say copy legacy settings. You can go down to the bottom. It says copy legacy settings. And then it's going to put your old sensitivity into this new layout or this new template, essentially. And it's still going to feel kind of off, mainly because of the aim assist changes, but also because of these turning boosts. These boosts are basically multipliers to your sensitivity if you're pushing the analog stick for longer periods of time the boost ramp time is how long it takes for the boost to kick in so you can put it up to a second to where you have to be moving your analog stick for a full second to get the boost i personally do not like the boost at all i turn it off for everything it feels very very inconsistent and very random and i want my things my sensitivity to feel as consistent and as random as possible I don't want to have to try to hit it like a shotgun flick shot and then have my sensitivity feel different because I hadn't been moving the analog stick for like whatever period of time. You know what I mean? I just prefer no boosts. And for me, copying legacy and then turning the boost off feels almost identical to legacy just movement wise. There's still some differences with aim assist and aiming, but without the boost, I put all the boosts on zero. The new sensitivity feels about as close to legacy as it can. And the main reason why you would want to use the new settings over legacy are there's better tracking aim assist on the new settings. Like aim assist is stronger. You have more customization and you can also hit a higher build and edit sense. So the higher build and edit sense is really nice. However, there is no edit aim assist and there's no scoped sensitivity. So your sniping is probably going to feel off. And if you're somebody who uses edit aim assist, which I personally do, you are unable to use it on these new settings. So Personally, what I would do if I wanted to use the new settings, and I've played a good amount with the new settings and with Legacy recently, um, I would copy from Legacy and then turn the boosts off. That's just me personally. Also, I would recommend turning look dampening time down. This is basically boost as well. It's just like delay, delayed boost in a way, I guess. Um, it, it's very similar to look acceleration or aim acceleration, which you've probably heard some controller players talk about. And I personally do not like it. So that's why I would turn it off. I use the instant setting on the Elite controller, which is very similar to turning this setting off. So that's what I personally would do is copy from Legacy, turn the boosts down, and then turn the look dampening time down. Exponential versus linear input curve. Linear, I think, would be better, but it feels very, very, very weird. The entire time you've been playing Fortnite, you've been on this exponential curve. So I would just leave it on exponential since that's what you're used to. But if you try it out, you'll see that it looks, it feels very, very different. So that's it with the new settings. Like I said, the advantages are better tracking aim assist and more customization over your sense. And you do have access to those boosts, which can be useful. However, I don't personally like them, but some people are going to like those things and find it helpful for whatever. But when you come over to turn legacy on, so if you go back to the bottom, use legacy look controls. If you turn that on, you're going to have your old sensitivity. You're going to see that on the normal sensitivity page, it's no longer grayed out and you can start messing around with it as again. And the differences between the two, like I said, is legacy has L2 spam. It's easier to understand and you're already used to it. And then also you have scope sensitivity and edit sensitivity. So 
I, I personally am enjoying legacy more than the new settings, mainly because my shotgun shots just feel so off on the new settings. I don't know what it is, but I am way worse with shotguns on the new sensitivity than I am on my legacy settings. And I'm really good with ARs anyways, and I'm good at tracking without the uh, extreme aim assist and without L2 spam. So I just am enjoying legacy. And here I want to show you an example of how L2 spam is actually back on legacy. So first we're going to play a clip of legacy and these are bots and creative. They function the same way as players do. Um, they have aim assist on them and I've tested it in game as well. I've tested it in creative versus a friend. I've tested it in an actual public match. The legacy look controls have ADS spam or have L2 spam. It's still a thing. As you can see here, look, it locks on. And then when I go to old settings, it doesn't lock on at all. And I'll, I'll have the clips playing back, back and forth. But it's very obvious that Legacy has the L2 spam. And I don't know if they're going to keep this. This is like my main gripe with these new settings. Is if they came out and said today, we're going to be removing this from Legacy. We're going to be changing Legacy. I would probably just try to adapt to the new settings. Because I feel like this L2 lock on. Or like being able to pop shot with the shotguns. Is what's making me better with shotguns on the Legacy settings. So if they came out and said like we're getting rid of this completely. It's an accident that it's still here. I would go over to the new settings most likely because the main advantage of shotguns would be gone for me. But since they haven't come out and said that, they haven't said anything about it at all, and Legacy is here, I'm assuming Legacy is here to stay. So I'm likely going to be sitting on Legacy still. Also, weapons like the Revolver, the Deagle, um, the Tactical Shotgun, I feel like those weapons are all much easier to use on Legacy because you do have that little bit of um, L2 spam. Even though it's not nearly as good as L2 spam back was back in the day of like Season 5 or Season 6, maybe even Season 7, it feels like it has gotten nerfed over time. Even though they didn't say anything about it in patch notes, I feel like L2 spam isn't as good as it used to be. I still find the Deagle, the Revolver, the Tactical Shotgun, there might be other guns that I'm missing, SMGs up close. I find all these weapons just much easier to use with ADS spam. And I don't personally like how extreme the aim assist is uh, with the new settings. For whatever reason, ARs just feel really, really, really weird to me. Like, lots of people are liking it, and you might be somebody who likes it. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But me personally, like, ARs just feel really weird to me on the new sensitivities. So that's why I'm sticking with Legacy, personally. But it just comes down to preference. I would recommend trying both and playing a bit with both. Maybe playing in the Zone Wars playlist with both. Playing in the Combine playlist with both. Like, give both of them a chance. Because I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. It just comes down to your personal preference and feeling for like the different weapons on these different uh, sensitivity or aim assist settings. So that's going to be it for this video. If you do have any comments, please do remember to leave a comment below. Ask me. I'll do my best to answer it. Like I said, I tested all of these things a lot to try to figure out what each of them do. And if you did find this video helpful, please do remember to share it with a friend. Because lots of people seem to be confused by this. And I tried to make this video as simple and as quick as possible to hopefully understand these settings and get better with the new settings or make a more informed decision about what you want to use. I feel like lots of people don't even know that Legacy can um, be used to get their old sensitivity back. So like I said, that's it. Just a quick recap of what these different settings do. The new sensitivity, you have more tracking aim assist. You obviously have more customization over everything. You have a higher build and edit sense potential because it goes up to five instead of just being capped at two. And you also have access to the boost that's, that's in the more customization. Currently lacking scope sensitivity and edit aim assist, but I feel like both of those will be added in the future. And if you play on legacy, you get that easier to understand, easier to customize sensitivity. You don't have to understand as much. It's what you're already used to. And you do get the L2 spam, which even if you're not someone that takes advantage of that, you probably take advantage of it in ways that you weren't even aware that you were taking advantage of it in. So it feels a lot more natural than the current sensitivity. Thanks for watching. Like I said before, please do remember to like the video, share it with a friend, and I hope you found it helpful. I really like the grapple hook, but one use, I should probably just take the gas. Yeah, that worked out well for you, dog. Just grapple right at me. It's headshot me with the grappler. It's an insta kill. I assume he's still down by that bridge. 
ये Almost would have been better off having the gas. Is he in zone right there? He's gonna come to me again. God, how much damage have I done to this guy, you guys think? He's gonna reload the RPG, let me back up so he doesn't destroy the base of what I'm on, again. Probably popping minis in there, but it's whatever. Honestly, should I let this guy win? He really, really wants it, holy shit. Like, that kid really, really wanted to win. Uh, 14 with 3? That's tragic. That could have been 17. I've gotten 14 so many times today. or had so many games where, like, the top I could get is 14. I don't know why. But let's get some GGs in the chat. And if you guys have not already followed the stream, please remember to do so. And turn on notifications if you would like to.